Welcome, everybody, to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. I'm Pete Wright. That there's Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hello Pete Wright. Hello, Nikki Kinzer. Oh, I hear uh, my dog. Do you hear my dog? I do hear your dog. <laughs> there he is, protecting there. us. That's right. You must have some sort of a... A, uh, some sort of a, a mailman emergency or a trash some, is being picked up. Yeah, something some, really threatening. Yeah, very threatening. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we have we had somebody um, write us, uh, and um, they had a podcast idea for us. They and sure this did. Is, this is one of their. Do you have it in front of you? Do you want to read? I do. It? All right. Yes, I do. So this is what um, was asked or suggested, I should say. I had a podcast idea in case you needed one, and we always need them. So yes, please give them to us. Yeah. <laughs> I have had a hard time figuring out what to do with all my children's art projects and how to organize, store, and save them. Throwing them away is so hard that I find myself keeping piles and piles of projects, and I don't know what to do with them. However, I know I can't continue to keep all of them unless I want to devote an entire room in my house, which who wants to do that? So there you go. Pete Wright, this is a digital episode. It is a digital episode. What do you do? Do you have a strategy for dealing with kids' work? Um, gosh, I do. And, and quite honestly, in the last year or so, it's sort of fallen apart a little bit. So I'm kind of excited to hear what you have to say about this. Because I have not actually gone digital with my, art, with my kids' artwork. Um, what I do uh, is basically at the beginning of the year... They each have this, like, bin that has their name on it. And as they come home with, like, school projects or corrected work or art or whatever, it goes into this bin. And it's a pretty big, you know, it's a pretty good-sized bin. It's not one of those, like, storage bins, but it... um, it's bigger than just like a, uh, it's kind of like a scrapbooking bin, I guess is probably the best way to, to sure. think about it. Like if you, you know, the, the, how you have those like square pieces of paper for scrapbooking, it's kind of a little bit bigger than that. So it doesn't carry like really oversized stuff, but it definitely carries the majority of what they bring home anyway. And, um, I basically collect things into that bin and then periodically, at least by the end of the year, for sure, um, I go through it and I decide which ones I want to keep and what I don't want to keep. And so I kind of decide, you know, what's most important, either if I always like doing kind of that before and after kind of like where they started at the beginning of the year and then how they ended up at the end of the year, you know, kind of seeing that progress of, mm-hmm. of work. Um, and then, you know, there's certain pictures that they do that just are really sweet or they mean more than just this, you know scribbles and stuff. So I kind of decide what I want to keep. And then, and this is where I've fallen behind quite honestly, is, um, I used to scrapbook a lot and I just haven't had the time to do it, but each child would have a scrapbook of that year. So like my son would have, you know, first grade, second grade, and then I would put these special things into that scrapbook. Um, so I did physically keep them for the most part. If something was too big, then I would take a picture of it. I've mm-hmm. been known to take a picture of it with the child. Like my son made this really cool poster um, of a state and he had to find all these like, you know, facts about the state and everything. And so I have a picture of him with the poster and then eventually my thought i have not done this yet i will admit it but my thought is that that picture will go into a, some kind of scrapbook right mm-hmm. sure <laughs> so that's what i've done and you know for the most part it's worked pretty well just because i i am actually you know i can let things go pretty easily i mean i, I don't have that need of keeping everything i i have a pretty good eye of what i want to keep that represents them at that time um but man if there's a way to go more paperless on it well, a- sure, sure. There's a way to go paperless. Of course, on it. There of course is. there's a way. I, uh, you know, I'm with you. I there was a, there was a time when, uh, you know, we had giant, giant piles of kids' stuff. In fact, I think we still have a giant, giant pile of kids' stuff in a closet somewhere on the bottom shelf of something that I just haven't gone back to. But our current process that we've adopted um, it is working pretty well, and it, it involves uh, your favorite and mine, Evernote. Uh, but there are, you know, once you kind of hear the way we think about putting, uh, you know, kids' projects uh, in electronic form. Uh, you know, you can adapt it to, uh, you know, any 
uh, service or, or, you know, file hierarchy on your computer that you want. So yeah, here's what we do. We, we see that there are, there are two real high level categories of work that comes in from the kids, right? There's stuff that I want to keep and there's stuff that they want to keep. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's something we've we've run into. And we don't talk about that a lot. Right. Which is, you know, the stuff that's important to my kids that they they want to keep. Usually we just think, well, well, the kids did cute work. I want to keep it and I'll keep it in a pile forever and ever and ever. But there is stuff that's important to my kids and that they want to keep it. So we 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 start with that split. Like if there's something that that they want to keep or I want to keep the stuff that I want to keep the the top level category there is the stuff that I want to keep and display, right? There is a very small number, a small percentage of the work that comes in that is that is stuff that I think is just particularly adorable, a, a cute, cute chalk piece of chalk, uh, you know, art or glue art or something that really is, is something that I think adds a lot of warmth to, to my life and to our home. So we'll put that in a frame or, and, and we'll actually display it. And it won't be displayed forever, uh, but for, you know, for half a year, for a year, whatever, until they, they sort of outgrow it and move on to another, uh, you know, in, to more and better work, right? We'll, we'll keep that around. For everything else, we go through this, this, this uh, sort of triage process where we say, look, if there's stuff that's important to us that we want to keep around, um, but we know we don't have the storage space to keep it all, uh, we're going to we're going to take pictures or scan it. Now we've really gone with the, the iPhone. I've got the iPhone 5s, and it has a stellar camera on it, particularly for documents and uh, and artwork like this. And so you just we just kind of get over it. We hold it real steady. We take a picture of the piece and put it into and, and I use the Evernote uh, document camera. So you open Evernote on the iPhone, and there you, you know you can start a new note by taking a picture. And I just tap camera, and I take that that picture, and it goes into Evernote. Now, once it's in Evernote, um, I have uh, it's important so that you can find it again mm -hmm. to title it and tag it appropriately. Now, I, I try to keep my tags as simple as possible, so the title will be the the uh, the grade and the yeah. name of the work, right? So I can see that it's you know um, owed on a uh, on a Grecian urn, sixth grade, and I will tag it. Say if it's my daughter uh, Sophia and artwork so those two tags sophia and artwork now occasionally she'll bring home a test that she did really really well on you know for example and she'll she'll have some work that she's really proud of that's not artwork but it's homework and right. i'll keep that too i'll scan that and i'll put it in there as sophia tagged sophia and homework and the title will be you know sixth grade you know math test uh, and so that way I can start cataloging the, the work of the kids in Evernote. And then I just, I get rid of it. I get rid of the originals. I've got the photos. They're uploaded to the Evernote cloud and, and, um, and they're there for me to keep. The, I have a question. Sure. And this is a definitely, definitely a question of a non-tech person, but as you were talking about Evernote and you were talking mm -hmm. about, you know, how you scan them and tag them and everything is it ever possible to like have too much stuff in Evernote? Um, you mean uh, like can, documents? Can and stuff? Evernote like, handle it? Like yeah, it, to like, the point I mean, where you're gonna break Evernote? Or just like either Evernote or like your computer? Like I mean, if you you know you're putting all this mm -hmm. stuff in and you you think about your kids, you know they're going through at least through twelve grades, right? Um, <laughs> and and I mean that eventually you're getting a lot of stuff on this program does yes. that matter no no uh, not for I, I have never run in and i've run into people who you know i i work with people who use who have a lot of notes and when i say a lot of notes i mean uh a hundred thousand two hundred thousand yeah. two hundred fifty thousand notes or more uh and uh you know evernote there was a time i think where the the desktop application was a little bit cumbersome and and would get kind of thick it would start to slow down. It would be, but it's it is they've fixed that, and I I haven't run into to any issues. Now you do end up with this issue. I mean, Evernote's their their mentality here is we're going to save everything. We'll help you remember everything, and part of the 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 challenge that comes with trying to remember everything is that um, you know it has a really great search field 
But when you search for sixth grade, you'll come up with everything, everything, everything that has, related yeah. to sixth grade. And so yeah, that's why, that. you know, these tags are so important to, to really help you. And you can, you can add other tags if you want to, if you want to sort of categorize within tags, you know, like I said, I use uh, sixth grade in titles, but you could use tags for sixth grade too, you know, tags for Sophia and artwork and sixth grade. And then you have, you know, that, that class of, of work really easy to find um, just by browsing your tags. Uh, so that's one way to do it. But in terms of the practical uh, implications of loading data into Evernote, I, I haven't run into anybody who has, uh, you know, who has really been uh, slammed by uh, by too many notes. Um, Good. Well, and actually, you just sort of reiterated why the tags are so important. I need to get back on doing these tags. Yeah, tags are important, particularly in this case, because you're going to be loading in more more data. Yeah. Uh, so that's the second class of stuff that we that we keep the stuff we want to keep in store. We put it on Evernote, and then finally the third category of stuff is stuff we toss. You know, we look at it, we appreciate it together. They tell us the story, and stuff they're not they're not you know so thrilled with that they want to keep forever. Stuff I'm not so thrilled with we want to keep forever, and we toss it. Mm-hmm. So that's step one. But what about the stuff the kids want to keep? And this is new to our system. Uh, you know, we live in sort of a digital age, and if the kids want to keep it, they have we, we have a, a fork here in our process. If they want to keep the original, say they, they make a, a sculpture of some sort or a mask or something that they bring home, uh, or, you know, or a painting or a poster or something, if they want to keep it, say it's already met my criteria and I've, you know, it's been on display for six months and I've taken a picture of it, it's in Evernote, and I feel good about where it is in my system, they have the responsibility, if they want to keep it, to find a permanent home for it, right? Mm-hmm. That's their job in their room. It can't be anywhere in the rest of the house. If they want to keep it, they store it in their room. And, you know, they get the sense of, of the cost of space. Oh, uh, interesting. Right, when they when so do you, choice. When you did this, do they then rethink about everything they want to keep? Or? Yeah, they we're getting there. We're getting yeah. I mean, they're still new to it. They're still new to it. But I'll tell you, the, the part that is, um, is uh, most powerful for us is that I created an Evernote account for each of my kids. I was going to ask you. Yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, so I, you know, I'm a um, an Evernote uh, premium user. So I, you know, I pay. And so I have one of the features that you get as a premium user is that you can log in and out of multiple accounts. You install Evernote, the application, and you can just, just a little handy drop down and you can say, I'm right now I'm Pete Wright. But, um, you know, in just a second, I'm going to take a picture and and uh, upload this this photo, and I want this to be in my daughter's account. So I can mm-hmm. just click this drop down and jump over to my daughter's account and see all of her notes, and I can add notes for her as well. And so, you know, we're she can access it on her phone. She can take pictures on her phone. I can access her account on my computer and upload notes. I tag it and catalog it the same way. So if it's stuff that they want to keep, but they don't want to keep the original physical piece of it, then you know we've set up and worked with the kids to set up this hierarchy so that they can um, they can start their own lifelong Evernote library. That's great. And we also include things like, um, uh, you know, their report cards and, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, all the stuff that, you know, one day, you know, when your mom hands you this giant box, right. it says, hey, I kept all of your report cards from <laughs> when you are. were in the second grade. Here they are. <laughs> well, now I can just, you know, make sure she has a password. And that's her, her digital hand-me-down box of all of her schoolwork. So. Wow. The difference is she's living in this school box now uh, as well. You know, she accesses it on her phone. And my son has an iPod Touch, and he uh, he accesses it on, on his Touch as well. And he, you know, he is actually zealous about organizing and, and uh, keeping his stuff uh, in order so that he can find it. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And, and so that's that's what we do. That's that's how we walk through it. And and I think the biggest muscle that we had to work here is being able to let go. Yeah, you know, right. It's that sense of knowing that you know the kids put so much work in this and and they let it go. But I think what what works about this process for us is that we're all a part of that decision making. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That we get to say there are, there are decision points where we get to say, you know what, you guys did great work here. I love that you did this. Thank you for bringing it home and sharing it. Here's how I'm going to keep it. Right. I'm going to mm-hmm. keep this digitally or we're going to hang this on the wall or here's how you get to keep it. You know, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. you get to keep it. Uh, you know, how are 
are they keeping theirs? Do they have like a little filing cabinet or do they have a box or a bin or how are you doing that? Uh, they figure it out. Sometimes it goes on display on a shelf. Sometimes it goes, uh, you know, they have a their kind of lower bookshelf and they kind of slide it in mm-hmm. uh, on this bookshelf. At some point, they're gonna they're going to face the the uh, the cold reality that their shelf is no longer big enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And there you go. well, and your son may even take it a step further if he's already got kind yeah. of that organizational mind frame of, well, wait a minute, I want to separate first grade from second grade. Exactly. How am I going to do that, Dad? Right. right. He's totally. <laughs> well, I mean, he's totally moved on. Like he's so excited yeah. about just the fact that he has this organizational structure that he doesn't want to keep much anyway. Yeah. You know, he's he's pretty much done. So it you know. surprises me sometimes, doesn't it? Like yeah. what they do want to keep and what they don't. Like you think that they want to keep something, and then they're like, oh, I don't care about that yeah yeah totally (laughs) and yet they want to keep this ball of lint that they've been holding on to that is so important yeah right right so so that's it that's our process i hope Uh, this helps whoever uh, wrote in i don't uh have uh her name here but i I, whoever wrote in i hope this helps it helps me oh good so thank you excellent you're very (laughs) welcome i love it and there's our there's our digital episode for the month there you go All right. Hey, thanks, everybody, for listening. You can find out more about the show, TakeControlOrganizing.com. Subscribe for free in iTunes. Best way to make sure you don't miss a single episode of, uh, you know, ADHD organizing goodness. That's Uh, right. And uh, until, until next week, I'm Pete Wright. That's Nikki Kinzer. And we'll catch you on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast.